Okay, the Vortex Force, as it was named by Bradley Gabe on the Houdini, sorry, Soft Image Exercise Ice video on Vimeo. I don't know what Vimeo, I don't know. But um, we're going to do the whole thing in Houdini, so let's get jiggy. Stop yapping. Okay, so let's begin this whole thing by dropping in what I guess would be m nulls. <laughs> and uh, wow, are you dived in? Um, create a null on the object level over here, and on my nulls over here for future. We I know in the we're gonna need to make our curve in a little bit. We're gonna be using the nulls, so our control point have, has seven points. And we need point number six right here in the middle. So you're gonna go ahead and group geometry, which uh, in our case will be the number six to get our middle point of which it has to be points. So you get our yellow selection for number six, and that is good. And you know, you might want to name it to something uh, funky or something groovy. So just name it anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste this five times. So copy paste, and I'm gonna dealing with the second one. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up um, a little bit and kind of you know distort the tweakiness a little bit. Okay, and once you got all your nodes laid out. Uh, in my case, all the nulls, I actually I'm gonna go ahead and change the background to black for a little while and probably hide this grid. And all the nulls are from the bottom is null 1, null 2, null 3, 4, 5, and you get the drift. So, pretty much, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this guys over here. And I'm gonna go to my vortex first. So, push on my grid probably and probably take that back to light. Excuse me. So, now I'm uh, go ahead and import uh, an object merge. And you can import into specified object, but make sure you have a dot in here to get the transform from the object. Or you can just into this object and select whatever object that you want. In our case, null one. Now, I know I need to do this all over again, so uh, import, uh, no, 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 I'm too lazy for that, so that ain't gonna work. I got a one over here, and I got a one over here. Now, being Houdini has a few expressions you can use. You can actually use an expression right here on the one, which in our case, the expression goes like up digits, and it needs a path for where you're gonna be getting the number from. So in our case, it's the same, very same node. So I'm gonna just use a dot to actually exp show that we're on the same uh, node to get the value from. And enter, well, our node is still, you know, I mean our null is still right there on the very bottom. So what I can actually go ahead and do is actually copy this and paste this four more times. And this is actually gonna get the number straight from the object merge and uh, paste it over there and pretty much I got my five nulls as it is one two three four five nulls and yeah so I can actually go ahead and drop in a merge so I can get all my um, nulls to form a curve for me so I got they almost hardly no visible but they're actually there and well, I got five points in curve versus they all get the same um, point name. So right after that, I guess the best thing will be to find a way to only get the middle points to form a curve. So in our case, I would drop a group geometry. And I would actually call this group all points. And what I actually want to do is actually say that the group all points no 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 I think it's supposed to be the other way around let me see curve is not equal to all points and now I should have five points in curve and everything else is not really necessary now actually I can go ahead drop in an add and I'm gonna be adding polygons which in our case is by group 
and as you can tell we have a problem being that we have the other points from the null uh, still present we're gonna create from the group cover but at the same time we're gonna go ahead and delete some of the other points which we really don't need from the other um, null points so in our case all points so now we just got a curve which is like so and as you can imagine uh, you know from the sub level I mean from the object level you can actually create where the null um, position is and out of that you get a you get a curve which in our case is a polygon so we're gonna go ahead and do a utility convert convert this to a knobs curve and you get a kind of smoother whatever but being with that we're going to be dealing with polygons I'm going to go ahead and resample this and that's automatically going to just as you can tell this is a knobs over here but uh, once I resample the whole thing now I got the whole thing rasterized pretty much and now if you check on the point display you got the, that and on this one you got the point where the knobs actually creating I mean the nulls actually creating the stuff so we got that and I guess um right after that being that our point numbers should be going in from zero from the bottom going up all we need to do now is actually under manipulate point we can actually get the edge force out of this so on a particle over here you can actually create um oops or force over here I mean you can create an edge force add an edge force and we're gonna go ahead and visualize that so I'm gonna go ahead tap in D on the key on the view while on the, while the mouse is over the you know over the grid or something just tap the D key and then the attributes well no and the uh, guides and markers you can actually create a new attribute uh, vector because we want to visualize the vectors and we're gonna edit this we're gonna name it edge dir and i'm gonna name this copy this and paste this right here probably override the color to green always like my vectors in green and accept and well they are there for sure we can actually go ahead and increase the scale normal for this under the attributes and as you can tell it does it points all the vectors on an upward scale like you want the point tangent in the XSI um, ice thing to do. Now there's another trick you could actually use to get this um, stuff the same way, which you'd actually use an attribute sort to sort all the point numbers. And what you want to do is actually sort shift the points by one, all the points by one. So now actually, if I look at this. Uh, all my point numbers begin the points begin with one over here and they actually begin with zero right here and what you want to do is actually use another points up and in our case you add normals to this but the normals you actually get the value from the second one and subtract from the first one pos point position of the second one from the first one and you get the um, attribute from that so in our case that would be tx2 minus tx and being lazy as I am I'll copy tab paste change that to that that tab paste and being lazy as I am I can actually come over here oh by the way that's just what well, you want over the expression alt e or right click and expression alt e then you can actually just say um, search for X replace it with Z replace all and accept finished <laughs> so it just depends on how lazy you want to be and pretty much now I got a force which is a normal which in my case uh, if I go ahead and delete the first point which is zero being that um, zero does some funky stuff um points uh I'm gonna go ahead and scale the attributes you can see it does the same thing pretty much and all you gotta do now is actually sort out 
the attribute to make it go in reverse so it just depends on really let me see if they can actually go ahead and do that you know, it's gonna work the same way or not and let's say reverse nope I guess if you do it like so so I guess that's the way I should have done it so I don't really need this sort over here and you get the same thing all over it's the same thing as this one only this one is now more um, of which actually if oh I'm, I'm going out or all the way out I'm actually go ahead put this over here I'm gonna hide the null I mean the normal display and I'm gonna take the attribute named n which in our case is actually right here it's a point attribute vector and I'm gonna name it to edge dir and apparently I get the same thing as prior as you know right here so this one is a little bit more emphasized being that uh, I don't know and actually you can do the same thing in VOPs right you can do the same thing in VOPs just thinking about that I'm not even supposed to be doing this but VOP plug in this one to the fast port now I guess I would plug this into the fast port and this one into the second port And what I want to do is actually uh, import data. So being that we're trying to learn Houdini, there's a few ways you actually import data. We can use a utility parameter, which um, in our case, you can actually use a vector. And the name of the attribute in our case is just N. And well, technically I cannot import that right like that, being that the uh, that is being imported right here. So really, I, I really can't actually. Houdini wouldn't let me do that, but you can actually do it like so. Uh, but I won't, cannot do it for right now. So under geometry, I'm gonna go ahead and import attribute, which will be a vector, n. And uh, the n comes from the uh, normal, pretty much. And oops, of which. Actually, that will be position. Let me just do position since the P attribute that we actually want from the first one. And we're going to subtract the position of this one minus this one. And what we get is a vector. And we're going to add an attribute. Hopefully, this works. I don't know. I haven't even tried this. Edge DIR. And well, I guess I'm supposed to put this the other way around. So, like so. And point number zero. Uh, no, see, it's not point number zero that's bringing the problem, but um, there we go. Yeah, point number zero is always a plot problem. So, I guess I would have to. do it like so and now I can actually just um, uh, increase the strength of this kind of sort of by actually doing a multiply so under math multiply I can drop in a parameter which in my case I would actually name it uh, false force multiplier and now if I actually increase this you can see that that in Increases the vector strength or the magnitude of the vector, make it stronger, kind of harder. And well, pretty much that's the three styles I say you would use to create the edge force. <laughs> wow, I never even thought about the VOP still now, but there we go. So that's enough of creating the attributes. Let's go ahead and start diving into the other stuff as far as for creating the whole effect. Let's get jiggy. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, finalize this. And um, what I'm going to go ahead and do actually drop a new geometry operator over here. 
I'm gonna name it uh, I'm not a matter of fact I don't have to do it like that I can actually just drop it in as a grid and name it uh, pops vortex forces or something something cool I guess and then um, you can actually parent the grid to the very top now so it's also on the top coming down then you have to reverse the normals and make them point down all this green stuff over here to point down but um, well we ain't gonna bother with that so and the particles we're gonna drop in a pop network and over here we're actually gonna go ahead and create our network for the um, for the thing now you're gonna be doing some vector math and stuff in a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a source pop which in our case is gonna be emitted surface random from the fast uh, context uh, whatever and um, well birth everything else can remain the same probably might output a thousand points uh, as a constant 5.6 1.5 that's good what we need next after that is a var pop and pretty much now we're gonna dive inside and start doing some stuff so I'm gonna go ahead inside over here and I'm gonna try kind of explain a little bit explicitly on stuff over here I'm gonna press the W key while I'm inside over here and what I'm gonna get is you know a tree of all the stuff in you know a particular file session and what we need to do is under the vortex force we got this force reference if you remember that's where the vops are created all the attributes and uh, we got a multiply and stuff so actually well oh you just click and it comes over here okay so you get the that's the path reference of which you know if you're using this style you have a null with the name that you want on there or if you're using this one you can have a null with the name on there but in our case we're over here so we want to come and get the data out of this particular point in the tree level so going back to the VAR pop going inside um, the way we're gonna go ahead and do that actually under geometry we're gonna get a point cloud open and it's gonna open up our point cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and press P on the keyboard. It's gonna ask for geometry on disk, of which technically, when you think about it, you can actually render the, uh, not render, but actually save the curve, then um, output it as a disk. But you know, Houdini, you can actually trick it to having, you know, think that it's actually on disk. So you can actually promote this parameter. I might go ahead and promote this too because I'm gonna need them later to you know create the whole effect and to make it work. So first things first, I would say would be to get that that little path thing over here. Now I know for sure, for sure, if um if I can uh, hold up and maximize this, if I open up a text board, so I'll shift T. Uh, assuming that I actually want to get um, this particular tree, uh, I want to get this particular node. The way to actually do it would be more like, uh, let's say, change directory. Then you would say obj slash the vertex force slash force reference or something. Then if you do, do PWD on this one, you actually print out the name or the path of where you actually want to do this stuff. Now I know for a fact that this ain't gonna work. For some reason it ain't work. It never worked when I tried out. So in this particular instance, you could actually use up uh, X help up full path of which you're gonna type in the expression. Then you're gonna give a string relative path, and it's gonna expand the whole thing. Uh, hold the whole path to a node so that kind of works um, kind of in a good way for us so we're gonna go ahead and implement that in the VOP uh, pop level so we're gonna use the op function to tell Houdini we got something on disk which is actually still on the, on the file then we're gonna use op full path then in our case all you need to do is put the apostrophe and all you gotta do is just go back to where you actually have the stuff. So in our case, it's here. 
and false reference. And 